Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Harris and today I'm talking to author Beverly Latimer. Beverly is the author of two novels, Hannah and Esther's Journey, with the third due to be published this summer. Today we will be chatting about her debut novel, Hannah, which was published last year and is a story of abuse and violence in a marriage. Hi Beverly, welcome and thank you for coming to talk to me on Book Talk Radio Club. You're welcome, thank you. Beverly, would you like to give Book Talk Radio Club's listeners a brief synopsis of the story, please? Um, yes, the book is about a young girl's fight for freedom after she becomes a victim of domestic violence. The story begins in the mid-70s when Hannah is just 14 years old. She's pursued by Philip Turner, who is 21 years of age and who is determined to have her for himself. At first, he comes across as very charming, very caring, and so it doesn't take Hannah very long to become totally infatuated by him. And what this does is it makes it easy for Philip to manipulate Hannah and coerce her into doing things that she is definitely not ready to do and is certainly not old enough. Mm -hmm. Further along in the book, a couple of decades later, we'll see how Hannah will look back at that time and will realise that what she thought was a relationship was actually sexual abuse of a minor. Mm. So they marry when, she, when Hannah is just 16 years old. And by the time she's had her first baby, she's completely under Philip's control. Um, she's isolated, they've moved um, a couple of hundred miles away from, from where her family and her friends are. And so she's very isolated and when the violence begins, naturally, she's very shocked, she's terrified. But she's also very ashamed and doesn't feel able to talk to anybody about what her husband is doing to her. And so for that reason, she is left alone really to, to, to deal with that by herself at a very young age. So here we have Hannah and Philip. Tell us what kind of characters they are, starting with Hannah. Well, when Hannah is 14 at the beginning of the book, she's obviously a very young girl, so she's very naive. Mm. She's quite shy, and due to the fact that she's had a difficult upbringing, she's a little needy. But as we watch Hannah grow and develop and become a, a woman, she develops coping skills. And she has a strength of character that she doesn't realise that she has. And it's this strength of character that she will need in the future. What about Philip? Philip. Right from the beginning of the book, you see that Philip um, has a lack of sympathy, empathy, compassion. He's quite cocky, arrogant, very sly, very deceitful, and believes that the world revolves around him. <laughs> Domestic abuse, a pretty uncomfortable subject to write about, isn't it? Although, unfortunately, many women have experienced it. Why this subject in particular, Beverly? Um, being a survivor of domestic abuse myself, I, I was a, a victim at a very young age, like Hannah in the book, and I wanted to get it across to the readers how it actually feels to be trapped inside a violent relationship. Mm. And I wanted to show also how um, domestic abuse impacts on the victim's emotional, psychological and physical well-being, yeah. especially when it's over a prolonged period of time. Over the years since I left my abuser, I've heard comments from individuals who lack insight and understanding as to why a woman can be trapped in an abusive relationship for several years. I've actually heard comments such as, Women who stay with a violent man must enjoy it. Well, take it from me as an ex-victim, no woman enjoys being kicked, punched, raped, and sometimes even tortured by the man who claims to love her. I've heard people say also, I would never let that happen to me. Again, if you've never been a victim of domestic abuse, then it probably is easy to believe that. Mm. But we have to understand that quite often a woman is simply too traumatised and too terrified to leave the relationship. 
So what, I mean, you've experienced this yourself, and I'm sorry that you have experienced it, but what, did you have to do any kind of research on what, you know, did you have to do any research, sorry, I should say, what kind of research did you have to carry out uh, into domestic abuse? Because there's all different types, isn't there? There is, yeah, there is. Um, I didn't actually do that much research because, um, going back to my, my past, I lived in a women's aid refuge with my children for several months after leaving my ex-husband and I had many conversations with other victims as well as staff that, that, that were in the refuge to support us. And what I realised was that even though we were all from various backgrounds, our stories were all very similar. Mm. We all fell for someone who at first appeared very loving, very kind. And then once we were in an established relationship with that person, quickly things changed. And what I realised was that um, a victim of, of domestic abuse has to get to the point where she realises that nothing is ever going to change, it's not going to improve. Yeah. And so the only way out of this situation is to leave. Mm. That, that is the scariest part of all. The scariest part is when you've just left a violent partner. It's a very dangerous time for a woman. It can also be a dangerous time for her children. And so many victims experience a serious violent attack after leaving their violent partner. Sadly, some women even are murdered soon after leaving. And so I felt that because of all the conversations that I'd had and the knowledge that I'd gained of other people's um, stories, mm. I felt qualified really to, to write Hannah's story. Absolutely. That makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Did you base Hannah's character on someone you know, or is she an amalgam of people, obviously mentioning no names? Um, Hannah is based on a real person, some, someone that I, I know very, very well. Right. right. And what about Philip? Um, Philip, I, I looked at the, um, the knowledge that I've gained about these type of men over the years, they all have similar personality traits, such as a lack of empathy. Mm. Um, they are usually very selfish, they have a short fuse, and they have a need to control. So what I did was, using these personality traits, I put together this character that was Philip. So Philip isn't actually based on a real person. I noticed on Facebook that you say, and I quote, only began writing two years ago, although I had been meaning to write Hannah for over 20 years. Why did it take you over 20 years? Well, life is just simply too busy. <laughs> Good um, enough reason. I, I was on my, on my own with children and working, and then a few years after leaving my ex-husband, I remarried. Mm. We decided to have a child together. And so I was in a situation where, although my husband was very hands-on, mm. I had teenagers and a very young child, and I was working. So I just didn't have a, a spare minute, really. I can see that. Hannah was your debut novel, and it's a story of courage and survival. Was there a particular author or book that inspired you to begin writing? I was, I was more in, inspired by the women that I've met over the years since, since I, I um, left my violent partner. Mm. Um, I met women in the refuge, I've, I've met other women since then, but um, after I left my husband, I believed that I was suffering with PTSD. Mm. And so I decided to join a group therapy group, and I had sessions there for a while, and I listened to some horrendous accounts from other members of the group, accounts that were much, much worse than mine. And so looking back at all this uh, information that I'd gleaned, from other people's stories, it was it was that really that, that inspired me to, to write Hannah's story. Let's talk a little bit about you now, Beverly Latimer. You grew up in the city of Leeds in West Yorkshire and now live in a small rural village in North Yorkshire with your husband. You love nature and wide open spaces and can often be found walking on the North Yorkshire moors. So where is Beverly's writing place? Where's your favourite place to write? place where I usually write is here where I'm sitting right now in front of my computer at my desk in front of my computer 
I'm not a person that enjoys being stuck indoors. I'm very much an outdoor person. Mm. But I find that when I'm writing, I get so lost in in, in the story myself that several hours can go by. <laughs> and uh, before I realise, you know, that I've, I've actually been there maybe six, seven, eight hours. Uh, but it's something that I enjoy doing. I understand you spent your uh, career caring for others. In what capacity, may I ask? Um, to begin with, um, as a nursery nurse, I worked in a school with year one pupils and, and I, I enjoyed it there. But then I decided that I, I wanted a bit of a change and I went to work on the neonatal unit at St James's Hospital, um, working with premature sick and drug with drawing babies and supporting the parents as well. I did that for about eight years and then after that we moved to North Yorkshire. So after moving to North Yorkshire I again wanted a bit of a change mm. so I retrained and um, I worked for social services for quite a long time enabling people that had um, maybe had long stays in hospital due to it could be a stroke, heart attack, accident, whatever. Mm. Just rehabilitating them to learn how to look after themselves again. Um, after well over 10 years of doing that, I then went to work on the brain injury unit at Gould Hospital, and that again was rehabilitating people who had suffered a, brain, a significant brain injury. At the moment, I work with a lady, just a one-to-one, um, who has a severe spinal injury and a brain injury as well. You believe in equality for all and hate any kind of injustice. You're particularly passionate about the rights of women and children and their right to live a life of free of abuse, quite right too. Where does this passion come from? Your, your experience or was it there anyway? I think mainly from, from my experience. Um, mm. I just think that the majority of people that suffer abuse are women and children. Now, I do understand that there are men that suffer from domestic violence and I'm not trying to belittle what they go through at all. Mm. And I would urge them to, to reach out and, and seek help yeah. um, at the earliest opportunity. But we have to accept the fact that the majority of people that are abused are women yeah. and children. Mm -hmm. And in this country, in the UK alone, uh, the NSPCC reports that at least one child dies every single week oh due to violence or neglect or both, usually at the hands of a parent or a step-parent or another caregiver. And I do feel quite passionate about this because I, I feel that society should be doing a lot more to yep. protect these children. You've received some wonderful reviews for Hannah, including a truly inspirational and fantastic book, a must read, and I couldn't put this book down, a compelling read, can't wait for Beverly's next book. Also, gripping story, it will break your heart and fix it back together piece by piece, recommended. That's fantastic, Beverly. So in our next interview, <coughs> excuse me, we'll be talking about your second book, Esther's Journey. Isaac and Esther Barrack, a young, beautiful and talented couple, are living in the south of France when World War II begins. They have everything to live for, fame, a loving marriage, a beautiful home and two young children. As Jews, Isaac and Esther are targeted. Their fame and their money cannot save them. They are captured as they attempt to flee to a hiding place deep in the French countryside. They are both transported to separate extermination camps in Poland within days of their arrest. Two and a half years later, Esther is liberated by the Russian army, but what of her husband? It's a sad but interesting story, and I'm really looking forward to chatting you to you about it. So lastly, Beverly, where can people purchase Hannah? Hannah is available on Amazon. It's also available on WH Smith and Waterstones websites. And I believe it's available in German, Norwegian, Swedish and Italian. Wow. So... Um, Okay, well, that's it. You've told me where people can purchase it. So thank you. Please come back on Book Talk Radio Club again. I'd love to chat with you and hear more. In the meantime, good luck for the future. And thank you, everyone, for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Lovely to speak to you, Beverly. Thank you, Claire. My pleasure.